so happy full moon 29th of december last full moon of 2020 um as i posted in my stories earlier on this is the last full moon it's called the cold moon i think um because it's very cold out as well as it's also a moon for releasing all that's not serving you so as i always say Keep what you want in your life that serves you for your highest good and get rid of all of the rest of it. And that goes um, with all aspects of your life. The 2020 experience of COVID was, um, as for me, um, my perception of it, it was like the cloud that had the silver lining. So even though it was uncertainty, it was a virus, it was um, uh, COVID and all the rest that goes with that, we didn't really know what was happening. There was lots of uncertainty with it, lots of fears that came with it, especially in the start of the year. And it sort of gave us um, a chance to really adapt and change and do th do things, especially for me in my life, do things that gave me uh, and brought me joy. Um, I've been doing Reiki since 2012. I'm on my spiritual journey since 2002. So that's over nearly 20 years now. And um, it has been for me something that I did quietly in the background, even though people who who came to me as my clients knew me as when they did eventually meet me because I used to be called Halo Reiki and I never put my face up um, when I originally started off on this journey. People who came to me were like, oh, they saw me at the front door and they was like, oh God, that's your one who's the singer. People who didn't know that I used to sing before in um, my, my alter ego, my other life, but in this lifetime, 20 odd years ago when I was in a band. And then I changed my whole life when my youngest, uh, Pierce, was born in 2008, um, who sort of really catapulted me onto my spiritual journey, my healing journey, because he was so ill. This time, 12 years ago, we were in Crumlin. We had our first Christmas with Pierce in Crumlin. I remember my husband having to stay over and do the uh, Christmas night in Santa with him in the hospital while I stayed at home with the other three children. It was such a tough time. And I remember thinking, oh my God, why me, God, why me? And I remember my, um, my husband's cousin, Jackie, very spiritual, very religious. Um, she gave me this little small little plaque that said trust. And I was like, oh yeah, this is lovely. Didn't really get what, what it meant. And now looking back on it, I now understand it was like as if she was a messenger. Um, a messenger from God, from source, whatever you want to call it. That it was a trust. Trust in uh, what is coming. Trust in uh, in God, trust in source, whatever way you want to call him or her. Um, trust in the knowing that you are uh, on the journey. There's no coincidences. Everything that's happening is meant to happen the way it's meant to happen. Even though at the time it was such a big drama for us, you know, oh my God, we're in hospital a few months now, but didn't realise we were going to be in hospital for nine months solid. Um, living uh, in Crumlin, sleeping on the floor, doing um, the parenting role to a sick child. And now looking back and I understand that that uh, journey, that part of the journey was like as if God picked me up by my scruff of my neck and put me into the hospital and said, here's where you're going to learn. And that's where I did learn all of my um, teaching, all of the, the stuff that I learned, all the knowledge that I gained through the books, through the meditation, was a lot of it was in the hospital there because even though I was on my Reiki journey, I'd learned how to do Reiki in 2012, 2006, two years before Pierce was born. I hadn't really sort of dabbled in it. I did a little bit on myself, my family, but I didn't really dabble in it as in actually open a practice or I wasn't practicing on anybody. So that was um, a massive, big uh, learning curve for me because then I actually had to put my hands into practice while I was in the hospital. And thankfully, uh, even though um, a lot of the doctors did say it wasn't looking good for him, he is now 12 years old and here we are Christmas and he's home perfect uh, yes he has um, a machine that he gets fed through but and we're you know 12 years doing it now only four nights a week compared to being seven nights a week 22 hours a day when we we're in Crumlin and having to just get out for an hour walk around the block when I think back to those times it you know makes me think of I'm so thankful for the fact that I actually got out of the hospital with my child because I saw so many other parents that didn't even though they were going in with short illnesses like meningitis I remember one lady came in after like a 24 hour stint and her child went out the door with it an empty pram and I just said please God let me take him home whatever way it is whatever whether it was a machine or what just let me take him home and 
Um, and it's not like I'm actually, it's it's in my contract that I chose to have Pierce the way he came to us because he was going to put me on this journey. Because when I took him home from hospital, he we weren't able to leave the house very much and it meant I had to stay at home and what could I do from home? And that was Reiki. So that's what led me down this journey. And now knowing um, the experience that I had, uh, that was the reason for it, the reason that I'm here doing what I'm doing now. And going back to the 2020 experience, when I look back on 2020, uh, the COVID experience and all of that gave me a time to adapt and go and do stuff that was now pushing myself out forward, pushing myself out more on a um, on a media place, in, in a social media sense where I didn't do that before. I was quite hidden in the background because I always felt that people would say, oh, you know, there's your one who's a singer and all of a sudden it's turned to God. And it's not it's nothing to do with that. It's the fact that I'm trying to use my experiences of being um, a mum um, being a mum to a child who wasn't normal, even though he is more normal than all of us, he is the most spiritual child ever, um, and has taught me and has been the ripple effect that has now sparked off me and all of my family and all of the clients and people who have now come to me for Reiki and you, because without him, I wouldn't be on this. Because I know that what uh, my experience and how it happened for me was uh, such a massive uh, awakening for me where i where i then understood all about source energy all about our guides all about our angels because of all the books that i read all the experiences that i had all of the god incidences that i had all the people i met over this journey and this last year has been a massive awakening for lots of people out there i know because I've, i'm hearing it through comments back that this year has been that year that i had in 2008 when i had my experiences and my awakening and what I say to you is do not fear it. It is such a beautiful experience. I love this time, especially when I'm doing Reiki level one courses for the newbies, all the newbies who are coming wide eyed going, oh my God, I got a, a feather for my angels or I got a 11-11 on the, on the, on the uh, clock in my, in my car or they getting those synchronicities, those God incidences. And I see that there's so many, many more of you all awakening now. And I feel, even though today I felt so shite because the full moon, <laughs> the full moon for me always is one of those days I'm going to kill somebody because I'm walking around my house cleaning. There's a massive big clear out that happens to me every full moon. My husband goes, here she is with a brush in her hand or the, the hoover. It must be a full moon. <laughs> and they go looking for the full moon. It's like, give mum a bar of chocolate and get her to sit down because I go on a massive clear when it comes to the full moon. But it has been such um, a, 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 a trial to get myself on tonight because it's like, oh God, I can't. I'm so exhausted. I just want to just get into the bath and just read my books. But I then realised that actually sometimes people out there actually need to hear what I have to say. And that's not in an egotistical way. That's in a way of me trying to spark off a few more people out there who are going through this shift and this awakening and uh you know if i can help you help you to try to get you onto understanding what this spiritual realm is all about understanding about the energy of the moon understanding about crystals um you know understand about the experience that we're going through at the moment and the shifting the 3d into the 5d i know i say that all the time people are like what's 3d mean 3d is third dimensional energy we are 3d energy right now lower vibrational energy and there is a massive shift that has happened since 2012 actually when this uh, massive shifting has happened to try and stop all of the old systems all the old conditions all the old um conditions beliefs um the paradigms everything that has been happening to us over these last couple of thousands of years because it's been um happening for so long now that now it needs to change because we're moving from a physical um 3d dense energy body to the 5d body which is more um on the spiritual side moving more into that 5d energy where we can now connect back using our pineal gland which i said last night in my video the pineal gland which is at the top of the head is sending a receiving station for spirit and more of us are now starting to connect in with our guides real easy going to bed at night time you're hearing hazel in your sleep you're hearing voices in your head and it's not just going mad i promise when you're crossing over in your sleep state when you go to sleep at night time you're physically on the bed asleep and your physical body detaches your spirit detaches detaches it from your physical body and there's always like these like golden cords or strands that are connecting to your physical body unless you're going to die and your physical body is going to flow off in your sleep you will always be connected 
the spirit is always alive and awake and it doesn't want to sleep your physical body is tired because it's done a 24 hour uh, you know day of being physical and you're when you're crossing over when you close your eyes you close down your ears all of the senses start to go is when you connect into the spirit side this is a time when we do a lot of our uh, astral traveling our bilocation when we zip back home to God to source and we then come back in in the morning when we wake up and that feeling of you know you've often got that feeling where you're going to go asleep in the bed at night and you go oh, you feel like you're falling because the spirit is falling back in uh, just to wake yourself up because you're like oh did I just fall asleep there that's the spirit reconnecting with the physical body and that happens at night time when it disconnects as well so you feel that feeling of floating up and when you feel that feeling of floating up just before you go into that deep sleep that um deep sleep that we all go into at night very natural experience uh, is when we then connect in we start to see the symbols the images all the stuff that we see in our dreams that's becoming really really strong now so many people are coming to me and saying oh my god their dreams are so vivid remember even though we're doing a physical purge at the moment we are also purging um all of our emotional body our mental body so anything that's going on within our uh, emotional bodies anything that we can't do in physical so say for instance there's somebody in our life that we can't uh, say something to we can't speak up to and um, we can't speak we, you could actually have a physical fight with them in your dreams or you'll have a fight um, where you're speaking what you want to say in your dreams and it's like as if you get it out of you in your dreams so you don't physically have to do it down here so lots of people are having those really vivid dreams and remembering them for sing in the morning when you wake up before the spirit comes back in fully into the body and before you take your foot and put it down at the ground that's when you ground your energy when your spirit fully comes into the physical body make sure you have your little journal beside your bed or on your notes on your phone have um take um notes of what you dreamt about because it's really important at the moment because your guides are trying to talk to you in your sleep now more than ever and it's really important that any messages are getting in your sleep try to jot them down before you take your foot and step it out onto the bed it's really really important now at the moment because this is where you're going to get the validations where your guides are going to say we're trying to give you the information every night in your sleep until you wake up and go god same dream i had last a week ago or two or three days ago every night for this week um, it's really, really important now that you start taking note of that because this is where you're really going to start connecting in. 2021. I'm going to look another time here. I'm going to just keep going because I might put this on YouTube. Um, 2021 is going to be a very, very different year to 2020. Uh, 2021 is going to be a year that is uh, a, a year of... Uh, still purging we're going to still do that purging thing that we've been doing the la this last 2020 and this last year of all the stuff that hasn't been serving us all of the stuff that hasn't been for our highest good the people the places the jobs everything the houses everything that is connected to us that's not for our highest good 2020 2021 is going to be very similar in the first six months and then it's going to be a time where we're going to uh have the sliding doors effect and i'll talk about the sliding doors effect in greater detail um but the sliding doors effect is where we are going to go one road or we're going to go another so yeah i'm going to come back and going to do the full video um on um i'm going to stop it here actually and namaste because it's 13 minutes and then i'm going to go to uh the rest of you on youtube so i'm going to keep talking now um yeah so 2021 it's going to be like the sliding doors effect. They showed it to me like the sliding doors effect. I I don't know whether you've ever see, seen that movie with sliding doors um, with Gwyneth Paltrow where she um, leaves her job and she gets goes to get on the train and that she misses the train. So the sliding doors as the train closes, she misses the train and she goes um, and she has her one uh, path in life. Then the other um, aspect of it is where she gets on the train and she goes home and she meets, finds her husband's having an affair. So this, that's what I mean by the sliding doors effect. So next year, 2021, is going to be a very uh, much like the sliding doors effect. You can choose to take the 3D road or you can choose to take the 5D road. And the 3D road, uh, the old road, which we're still in now, a lot of us, a lot of the ones who haven't awakened yet, are still in that at the moment because... 
they're in the whole fear uh, uncertainty, being controlled, being manipulated, still having those conditions put on them, still having those beliefs that they have had all of their lives and all through their generations of their parents teaching their parents, teaching their parents, teaching their parents, coming down to them in this generation now where the same beliefs are there, the same conditions are being put on them and that's the real old energy, the old 3D energy. Or we can take the 5D road where that is the new road of freedom, sovereignty, where we have no limitations put on us, where we have no conditions put on us, that we now start to um, act more in love, more in kindness, compassion, all of the things that we sort of have missed over the last uh, couple of hundred years. A lot of people have gone more selfish, uh, more about what they want for themselves, what um, all about, like even as I said, one of my other videos where, you know, even our, our, our neighborhoods where we didn't even talk to our neighbors, there was a lot of that that went on. We're going to go down the more 5D road where we're going to have more community, more uh, compassion for our, um, our fellow human beings, um, more understanding of how we can heal ourselves. The old way was how we believed that only a doctor could heal us. That was had to be done by medicine and um, the pharmaceutical route. Now we're going to understand in the 5D that actually we can actually heal ourselves. And the last uh, year of 2020 has really shown us that. I mean, this has been a massive big year for me where I, even though I know about the energy and how energy heals, we are energy first. I mean, I didn't know anything about vaccines and all to do with vaccines and how vaccines are formed and made and all of that. But it really gave me insight into because I had to research it because I don't like going out there and just listening to one person talking and, and you know, it's been um, bombarded from all our mainstream media of you know the vaccine and all of that stuff i wanted to really delve in and find out about vaccines and how they were made and how this vaccine is being made and understanding it on a science level and also understanding it through meditation because my guides were giving me all this other information so the 5d energy is more about um going with your gut instinct really really going back to your soul brain which i always try to explain it like that we have a brain a physical brain but we also have a soul brain which is the gut instinct which is in here in our solar plexus and the solar plexus is like our receiving station our intuition and when we have a go with our intuition and our gut instinct that's what what our soul brain is it will never lead us on the wrong road we've We've steered away from that. We, we, we used to use that a lot, especially when we lived in Atlantis and Lemuria and those places when we had that 5D energy where we were able to connect in and we went with our gut instinct. Our gut would never sit, send us on the wrong road. But now we've gone to more logical brains. We, we feel what our gut is saying. Don't do it. Don't go down this road. Don't take this job. Don't be with this person. Um, and then we then allow our brain to work it out, right? our analytical side of us to allow our brain to work it out when actually we should have went with what our gut instinct told us. We really need to come back into really feeling what the gut is telling us. And if the gut is telling you mm, there's something finicky going on or something not right, always act with what your gut says. Then find out, go look for the knowledge. Ask your guides, mm, this doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel right in my gut. Send me the knowledge. Ask your guides, you have a full team around you that is all of your spirit team, your spirit guide that came with you when you're born, your other spiritual helpers, especially if you're a healer, especially if you're somebody that's gonna go down the road and spark off other people. What is your gut telling at the moment? Is your gut telling you it is right or it's wrong or it has a good feeling or a bad feeling? Go with what is the good feeling always. If it has a bad feeling, you need to have discernment. You need to ask questions. You need to research it more. That's what I've always done. Even when I was on my Reiki journey, when I started off first, even people saying to me, oh God, that Reiki stuff, wouldn't touch that. No, no, no. Especially living in Ireland, we have this whole, um, still the conditions and beliefs of being that underneath the Catholic Church and the umbrella of the Catholic Church. And I'm not bashing the Catholic Church. I have lots and lots of friends who are Catholic and I am too. And I'm more spiritual than I am religious. But, you know, we've had this belief and down on us that, oh God, don't dabble in anything else because everything else is not God when actually it is. It's not new age. It has been around for thousands of years. We've connected in with um, source. I'm um, connected in with our guys through meditation. It's been happening for thousands and thousands of years. And uh, Reiki, when I had my first experience of it, I was being uh, um, told off from it. Don't go near it. And I had to discern for myself and actually get a few books and 
uh, understand that my my aunt who taught me was doing it for 40 years at that point and had never had never had any bad um uh, people coming and any bad experiences from anybody who was ever sent to my auntie for reiki and i when i started doing reiki for us in the start i didn't have any bad experiences of anyone saying oh that was crap never so i always went with my gut instinct how can it be wrong if you're if you're if you're doing it from your heart first your intention is to help the person how can it be wrong and if your gut instinct is leading you because it feels right i know i knew it felt i felt a field it felt right in my gut so to do what it. i say is have discernment what I always say to all of my clients, if, if it doesn't feel right in here, and so many of my clients over the last few months, and especially this year, this last 12 months, have said that, you know, this job doesn't feel right for me anymore. This person in my life doesn't, make, doesn't feel right. These experiences that I'm going through doesn't feel right. This uh, COVID experience is making them um, have discernment where they're actually now starting to go with their gut instinct and say, mm, that doesn't sound right to me especially to do with all of our systems that we have in place, to do with the medicines, to do with the vaccines, to do with our technologies, our science, to do with the 5G and all of the energies and all of the experiences that we're having with that, all these new technologies that are coming in, uh, the, the political system, our own political system here in Ireland, we've had so much um, uproar between all of our, um, and, and our own government, as well as watching what's going on across the waters in, in America and the uh, corruption that's going on there with the voting system. And that's been going on for hundreds of years, right? We have now have to have discernment and we have now have to, um, you have to go with our gut instinct. And what does it, what is it within our gut that's telling us that we have to research a bit more, look into a bit more. So what I would always say to you is, this is the time, 2021, we're going into this. This is a time where I want you to go use your gut instinct more. Go with, with, with your, your solar plexus, which is, which is your seven, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, uh, your third, your third tree and a third, your third uh, chakra, which is the um, it, right underneath your breastbone here your solar plexus is all to do with your power and as I always say power is uh, knowledge is power and when we have that knowledge when we actually look for the knowledge ourselves remember within ourselves we have this uh, receiving station to God we can connect in with God ourselves this is where it's uh, 2021 is a time where we're going to have to do a little bit more meditation because we're not going to believe what we're being fed anymore we're going to ask our own guides, our own guidance system, source energy, God, whatever you want to call it. I want you to ask them yourselves, but you cannot ask it, God yourself unless you go into that meditative state where you can go within. And when you go within and you close down all of your senses and go within and you can really go within and feel that deep connection to the God within you and that connection to source. You can ask the questions there and it's going to be really easy now. Over the next few months, you're going to be really um, able to connect in. They, how they connect with you is through tough forms. When we go across to, to spirit, we don't speak with our mouths. We don't speak language with our physical mouths. We speak with our mind. Telepathy, that's how we work over there. Um, uh, the, even the, the, the um, light language that I use, some of the different star beings, they use different languages over there, different language to what we use down here light language, um, angel language, um, speaking in tongue. Um, but when we connect in, when we're in meditation, we ask our guides, is this right? Can you please show me, give me the knowledge, give me the understanding, ask your guides to give it to you. Then the information that comes, whether it is true, your Google or whether it is true, your TV or whether it's true, a book or it's true, somebody talking to you, your guides are going to try to give you that knowledge in those um pathways to get that knowledge to you and sometimes if you're very good at it and you get better at it because you meditate more you can connect in with your guides by closing your eyes down asking them question and you will hear it in your own voice that's how it works when i ask my guides for information i hear hazel talking but it's hazel's tall forms talking to me to give me the answer that i'm looking for that's how it works it's not uh, this man voice or this voice that's um you know like we've heard in the movies it doesn't work like that it's your own thoughts they talk with thought forms and 
it's like when we have somebody that's close by us, you know, maybe a grandparent or somebody who's crossed over and we think about them, it's because they're stepped into our vibrational energy. They've stepped into our auric field, which is around us because we're not on the same dimension as them. They've gone to a different dimension and they will give us a top form. The top form comes through that um, field, the energy field that we have and in to our channel, into our pineal gland, into our minds, and they will give you uh, the, the top of your granny. So you'll say, oh my God, that's just thinking about my granny there because your grandmother is giving you the top form that she's quite close by. That's how it works, it's so easy. You just have to practice. You've got to close down the mind. You've got to close down your eyes, close off all the senses, do your breaths, give yourself the time to meditate. I cannot reiterate this enough. You need to start to try to connect in. How will you ever know that you have your guides on the other side if you don't give them the space to be able to, you to be quiet so they can hear, you can hear them. You have to have that stillness. And I've really, really found that out, especially this year. That's one of the biggest things that happened for me in the COVID experience. I never got a chance to meditate because I'm so busy as a mother, so busy doing my Reiki clients that I've always given, given, given. I've never taken the time to actually close down and take the uh, information in. And it was it has been so powerful this year. And they've said that I need to reiterate that more to you. You need to want to connect to them. They were, are wanting, they're there, ready to connect to you. They've been around you all of your life. But because you've been in this 3D, old vibration energy, you cannot connect in with them. And they really, really, really want you to connect in more than ever. Because they'll give you that knowledge. They'll give you that understanding that you're looking for. Especially while you're going through this, these um, moments of uncertainty where we're going through the COVID experience. Should I take the vaccine? Is it to do with 5G? All of these things that's going around that we don't really know who to believe ask your guides to give you the information um, it is, and it, I promise you they will they will get you that information if you ask for it and as I always ask my guides send me the information and the understanding send me the knowledge and the understanding because there's no point in giving me this big book that I can't understand give me the information that I need and your guides will never ever ever give you anything that you're not able for I remember way back at the start when I started on this journey for us all uh, trying to understand about Jesus and the life of Jesus and they sent me this really uh, big book called The uh, Course in Miracles and it was like such a hard book. I was like I've got to put that one to the side because it was just actually hard to understand it and now reading it I totally get it. I understand it now but I didn't understand it then. Both the guides would not give you anything that you're not able for. They'll give you little bits, little bit by bit by bit. It's like giving a baby milk crushed vegetables, and then you give a baby fill a steak. You don't give a baby a fill a steak at the start. Bit by bit, your guys will give you that information. So for the next uh, few months, we're going to go through another few months of purging. That is going to be the case. That's, um, you know, we're there's timelines that are happening out there. There's all of these new things that are going to come to the surface again because we're going to purge it up. All of this um, stuff that we've been little bits, tidbits of um, hearing about, uh, especially to do with the politics, especially to do with um, the um, sex trafficking and the children and the paedophile rings. All of those things are going to come up in the next uh, few months. Uh, there's going to be another um, uh, belt of it where we're all going to be like this with our mouths open. Nothing that we can't handle, I promise you. I remember when I started on this journey in January uh, in the COVID experience and I asked my guides what's happened. They said the divine feminine, which is the female energy, is now tipping the scales and the female energy is now starting to become up tipping the scales because obviously the male energy hasn't been doing a very good job of it and not giving out to all you men out there but the male energy has had a, a, is tipping now and the female energy is coming up and especially in the next couple of months with all of this stuff that's going to come out where the mother especially is not going to be able to stand for what's going to come out and that female energy that powerful female energy is really going to rise up we've already done it before with the me too movement we had the black lives matter movement where a lot of women took to the streets because we do it in a different way i'm sorry to say that men, men there's a lot of aggression with all ye but there's lots of uh, divine female energy in males as well it's just there we just need to turn you up a little bit more but the divine feminine energy is really going to take a strong comeback in the next few months and we really need to step into the power of understanding how powerful we are especially us women how powerful we are as healers especially because we're con connected to the earth we're connected to mother earth we have that grounding ability we have the creator because we're the only ones that can create 
um, especially creating those beautiful souls that are coming in. We're the only ones that have that spiritual portal of the birth canal to bring in all those new high vibe babies. We're very, very powerful. Like in the time of Jesus, Mary was the most powerful and her mother, Anna. Uh, I've realized that really over the last few years of doing my work. Women are very, very powerful healers. I know that from doing my Reiki courses. Most Reiki courses that I have, it's 95% women. Every Reiki course I have is a male. And most times I get a male, I get a male who's very in touch with their feminine side, very much in touch with the female energy, that divine feminine within them because we all have it. So we need you all to come together and we need you all to really be those pillars of light. All of us stand up together. We can't be a light worker and stand in the back and say, mm, not gonna, you're not gonna look at that. I'm not gonna dabble in that. I'm not going to go down that road of vaccines. I'm not gonna go down that road of 5G. We need to start speaking up a little bit more. We need to start opening our mouths more, speaking our truth, speaking what we know within us, our gut is telling us and our mouth won't allow us to say because of the fears of what we've had to deal with before in other lifetimes. We need to step into our power and understand that when we have no fear and we're fearless, become that um, mammy lion, I don't know what to call a mammy lion, but a mammy lion, protecting our children, protecting our fellow humans, protecting our fellow healers out there and step up and be as one, as one big force of energy that is going to be able to dismantle it. We're all, we, the light has already won, but we really need to step up and really uh, step into our power have no more fear. Don't have any fear anymore because that's the old 3D. Remember, feel the fear and do it anyway. I always say that to my children. Just, you know, do it. Um, don't have any fear because it gets in the way of stopping you from doing things. The fear for me is like the big sister. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I've stopped myself from doing things, especially over the last few months, talking about stuff like, you know, the vaccines and 5G and all of those things because it was, um, I was uh, fearful of being shadow banned and not getting the, 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 the light messages out there. But now we really have to step up because if we don't step up and be those pillars of light and not have any fear, it's going to take a lot longer to dissolve this old, deep, dark energy that has been around for so long, way too long. So 2021 for me is exciting. I can't wait. I'm so looking forward to be able to get out, get my hands on people, to be able to attune people now into this new energy that's coming in. Such a really high vibe energy that's coming in. And I really, really can't wait to be able to attune because so many people wanting to um, go down the road of learning how to work with energy, with Reiki energy. So many people are there wanting to work with other healing modalities because they realize actually the medicine route and all of the um, pharmaceutical ways is not the way of doing it. We're going to go back to the old ways of doing things, the way we did it before, back to uh, healing our body naturally, back to good foods, good water, lots of meditation, lots of um, exercise, being out in nature, so, so good for our body and being able to heal ourselves. It's the biggest investment ever. Um, when we get back to um, the uh, lockdown, when the lockdown is over here, I will be straight back into doing Reiki. If it means I have to do a Reiki course every weekend until we go back into another lockdown, I'm going to do that because there's so many people out there who are dying to try it, dying to connect into this new energy and be activated and opened up to it because this is a time, 2021 is going to be a fantastic year, I can't wait and yeah, we just need to have a little bit of discernment over the next few months and do a bit of research over the next few weeks and really research before you go down the road of taking any form of medicines, and you know what I mean by that, before you jump on the bandwagon of thinking, oh my God, there's a new strain and doing all of that lark. Please, please, please research for us because, um, yeah, yeah, I think you'll open your eyes when you actually do the research that I've done. I would never say to anybody, do or don't. Um, I know what I'm going to be doing. And I think people out there who know me know that I'm very, very, very adamant that uh, I will always go the natural route and stay away from medicines. So... Let me know in the comments what you feel, how you are feeling and let me know if you're going through what I'm going through <laughs> because especially with this uh, full moon energy, every time we get a full moon I'm like, oh, another shift, another shift. Let me know uh, because I love to um, be able to help you, especially if you're going through some form of a shift and you're not understanding it. Let me know in the comments below or you can always message me through my uh, 
social media outlets i'm at halo therapies on insta which i'm always on and um, you'll find all of the information in my link tree above in the link on insta so until the next time i'm on i know it's been a long video uh, hence why i did it is split it into um but until the next time namaste love you loads <laughs>